Hello! Hoo boy, this one's going to be a nostalgia fest. So, we are all aware of the existence of breakfast cereals, obviously, and indeed breakfast cereals marketed to children, which are essentially normal breakfast cereals with a load of sugar glued on them and a cartoon character on the box. Now, these days, you don't get so much in the way of free prizes in these things. Often it's like I don't know, a QR code for a new hat in Roblox or something. I don't know, don't care anymore. But we are casting our minds back to the 80s and 90s when these boxes would contain a little trinket or toy or prize of some type often one of a part of a set and you'd have to try and collect all eight by buying like 40 million boxes of sugar puffs or whatever well we're going to be taking a look at some of these today and i'll tell you what these things go back a lot further than i thought um they've been regularly toys in uh, cereal packets since the 1950s and the earliest right they had mother goose stories on the back of rice krispies packets in the 1920s i shit you not this stuff has been going on for like a hundred years as i say i'm not entirely sure if it's going on anymore in the same way but hey this is a nostalgia video so let's look at some old stuff <laughs> Do you know what? This image I put on Twitter, and my God, it, yeah, this is like the nostalgia kicker for um, so many people. It is a reflector you put on the spokes of your bike, you know, on the wheels. You see, it clips on in the shape of the uh, rooster from the cornflakes packet, which I believe is called Cornelius. Although I don't know where I've got that information, that just came to mind from somewhere in the dredges of my memory, so uh, don't quote me on that. It may actually be called Ricky Bob Potato Man or something, although that's statistically unlikely. Never mind. Anyway, these were given away from about 1988 to 1990. This particular one is from 1989. Look. It's got a thing on the back. So yeah, these were huge. Everybody had loads of these and you had different ones. There were ones like, um, I think there was one with the Coco Pops monkey on, who I think it's called Coco. There's one with Tony the Tiger on from Frosties, but this is the more plain uh, equivalent. Here's an exciting fact for you. Uh, cornflakes were invented to be the blandest possible cereal in the hope that people eating it would stop masturbating. That's not even a joke. That's entirely true. Read up about Kellogg. He was a lunatic. But hey, he did eventually give us these nice spoke attachment reflectors, so... <laughs> he can't have been all bad. They made a film with him once, didn't they? Um, well, a film about him, not actually with him. That'd be weird. Uh, Andy Hopkins played him. I think it's called The Road to Wellville? I don't know. See, all this is just being dredged up from parts of my memory. It's probably wrong, and you'll assassinate me in the comments. Anyway, who remembers Spangles? I remember Spangles, and also I remember these. No, seriously, this is... Uh, somebody sent me this in a box full of stuff, and it gave me such a nostalgia hit seeing it. Just the uh, colour and the size. And, oh, these were bloody everywhere. And now... They're just on eBay and in landfills, because unfortunately, that's the way the world works. Now, the next one is something I particularly loved. And now, I only ever had one of these, because they came with shredded wheat, and I wasn't a big fan of the shredded wheats. So, these were given out in 1987, but are interestingly dated 1986, I believe, and are quite obviously Dungeons and Dragons holograms. Ooh, you can't see it properly under this light, but I'll sort that out for you in a bit. You can probably just make out it is a skeleton. So this is uh, interesting. They were made... Well, they don't look like they've got anything to do with the old Dungeons and Dragons cartoon. Hey, a Dungeons and Dragons ride! Um, but they kind of did, because on the back of the Shredded Wheat packets, they had the Dungeon Master character from the cartoon looking at them. So it's kind of a tie-in with that. But there's nothing to do with the cartoon actually on them. Five more to collect. Collect them all or be destroyed. So, Monsters Courtesy of Citadel Miniatures, copyright 1986 TSR, which is, of course, Dungeons and Dragons. So... Ooh, uh, produced by Applied Holographics PLC. Oh, that'd be cool. Wouldn't start a company called Applied Holographics. You'd sound like the most futuristic person ever. Um, so, yeah, this is really odd. Basically, in the early days, Citadel Miniatures, who you may know as being uh, the same company as Warhammer and Warhammer 40k and all that kind of stuff, had the Dungeons & Dragons licence. Had the Lord of the Rings license early on, if I remember as well. In fact, I think they got it again after the films, didn't they? Anyway, that is a divergence. Uh, yeah, had the Dungeons & Dragons license, made some Dungeons & Dragons figurines, and these are indeed holograms of the little miniatures. 
um, probably made out of lead, maybe plastic, look more lead to me these ones. But the holograms are really bloody good. You need very specific lighting in order to see them. Um, I've set that up and we'll cut to it shortly, but um, well, something else I liked is that each of them had a different background. You see you've got the sort of smashed up Greek um, architecture here to evoke Jason and the Argonauts, doubtless. Right, actually, let's cut over to it right now. So these are in number order. Over to the left here we have, ooh, a poor old prisoner rotting away in his cell. There's number one. Number two, some sort of orc bugger with a big mace to smack your head in with. He's in some sort of swampy dungeon thing. Uh, possibly a sewer, actually. No, wait, the next one's a sewer. And coming up out of the sewer is a wizard firing his magic ray. A cone of cold, maybe. Maybe a magic missile. Maybe a Hergelflerk Splurkelen. I've got absolutely no idea. Next up, something you can't make out because it's a very darkly coloured hologram and I cannot get it to film for love nor money. It's like a big sort of ogre thing with a halberd. Uh, then we've got what I think is a chaos dwarf of some type in there with his uh, m multiple headed flail. And finally, there is Skellington himself. Looking a little bit too bright, actually. It's clearer to the naked eye, but yeah. It's nice stuff. What lovely things to get in with your cereal. Ugh. What's this? Ugh. Now, the next one is from Sugar Puffs, and I tell you what, this, it's, this was such a nostalgia hit for me for remembering that these existed and then finding them on eBay. It is honey monster puffy sticker things with googly eyes. <laughs> See the, the eyes, like little balls move about, do you see? Do you see? Do you see? Uh, this one features Honey Monster in his uh, World War One pilot get-up, flying his radio-controlled plane that's about to smack him in the back of the head and presumably give him the googly eyes. I had this stuck on like some bit of furniture in my room for like, I don't know, six or seven years or something, so well do I remember it. And here's another one where the honey monster is throwing a boomerang which is smacking him in the back of the head. I don't recall if every single one in this series involved him getting some sort of head trauma from behind due to him mishandling a toy, but that seems like a very, very strange set of stickers to give away. Look at the back of this. Tell them about the honey, yummy. That was the catchphrase. Do you know, I honestly thought it was tell them about the honey mummy because uh, the honey monster had a slightly indistinct voice in the TV advert, so when you go, tell him about the honey, mummy, I thought it was mummy. And I just thought, well, but why is he talking to his mother, who was not seen on camera? It's because it was tell him about the honey, yummy. Ugh, God, what an idiot I've been all these years. You'd think I would have just read this backing paper, wouldn't you? But I have no recollection of doing that whatsoever. See, these are quite fun but I'll tell you where it was at for Sugar Puffs. Couldn't get hold of any of these, but the Honey Monster Stickers Kit. Ah, oh, amazing. You would get these um, like proper gatefold um, sets of stickers and you opened them and there was like multiple pages of them. And one of the pages would always have separate letters so you could stick in and write your own words on things. Ah, oh, amazing. Probably my favorite things that ever came in cereal. Speaking of excitement and cereals, did you ever open a cereal box to find they'd accidentally put the whole set of something in there because they'd got stuck together at the factory? Ah, oh, happened to me once with, um, I think it was cornflakes or something and they were like lenticular pictures of dinosaurs or something We've got the whole set what an amazing thing that was the most common thing i believe in the uk for that to happen with were the star wars episode one little weird bust statuette things they gave the characters um they stuck together quite heavily in the factory and would frequently be found well not that frequently but more frequently than others be found in whole sets and packets so if that happened to you Hey, you should start a club or something. Now this next one, I have no memory of existing, but it is bloody amazing. I came across this at a toy fair, just totally at random. It's a bit of cardboard with a hole in it. Brilliant. So um, what you can do is use it as a plate that you need drainage for. No, no, it is a flexi disc. So flexi discs were almost certainly a sort of well, they're not an exclusively UK thing, but according to a friend of the channel, Mr. Paul Gannon, uh, most flexi discs were made in the UK for the UK market, something like 85% of them, uh, which is very interesting because I thought that was more of a universal thing, but no, this was very much a uh, UK phenomenon in, in the largest part of it. So this is obviously a single-sided flexi disc that they have just glued literally to the front of a Frosty's packet and somebody has cut it off but hold it and um, there you go you can now play 
Thunderbirds are go. The pressure mix FAB featuring MC Parker. Mega hits of 1990. Astonishing, isn't it? Um, so yeah, it was literally like here's a single. Here is a single that's in the charts just stuck to the front of your Frosty's packet. Um, you're never going to get that off. And there's nothing on the other side anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But yeah, cut round it, stick it on your record player, away you go. You can hear um, Thunderbirds ago with a pressure mix FAB featuring MC Parker as much as you possibly want. Mm. And I'll tell you what, I tried it and it bloody works perfectly. Even where you've got these big white lumps on here, didn't upset the music at all. I'll show you it playing now, but I will not show you any of the sound from it whatsoever because uh, even playing a fraction of a second would get me copyright struck into oblivion. Um, so to talk about the song a bit, yeah, this is the theme to Thunderbirds with a load of shit 90s sampling, basically. Oh dear. I've just realised, copyright 1991 Telstar records. Ah, so they were like mega hits of yesteryear. That makes sense. They wouldn't be giving you contemporary singles, would they? But yeah, so this song, oh my god. It's not the good Fuzzbox one, if you're thinking of that. Calling International Rescue. Oh no, this is basically the Thunderbirds theme with, I mean, hang on, describe this. Um, unlistenable ultra 90s sub techno garbage yeah but sums it up really just loads of samples mashed together over an existing theme tune it was a dark time friends a dark time if i recall even the cover for the single was hideous actually that sort of 80s 90s crossover period oh dear. it comes from the album power themes 90 which had loads of old itc tv series themes messed up like um uh, you know, stuff like Joe 90 and The Prisoner, The Avengers, all that kind of stuff. And you know the worst thing? This song spent eight weeks in the charts, peaking at number five. Uh, let's try not to think about that. And instead, we shall think about Enterprise Neptune from the National Trust. I don't know what that is, but it was saving our unspoilt uh, coastline. Nearly read that, saving our unspoilt clothesline which would be very good for wrestlers. Yet the National Trust for Scotland present Magic Window on the Seashore. Look, this one's Sand Lizard and Centauri, Centauri among sand dunes. Centauri, that's an interesting word, isn't it? So yeah, the Magic Window works like this. You find it in your cornflakes, get it out, try not to pour milk in it, and you see just this outline of the uh, sand lizards there. But when you pull it, wait for it, Ooh, magic! It has come to life with colour. By which I mean the, the film there has gone over a colour picture of the, the, the things. That's amazing, isn't it? It's like Paul Daniels is in the room with us and he's joined forces with David Copperfield and Gandalf all at once. Ah, what a day that would be. So yeah, you've got a uh, sand lizard there. These are the slightly less exciting ones, do you know what I mean? These are ones that uh, would come in the more normal serials, like cornflakes and stuff. They're not as exciting as a bloody hologram of a skeleton, are they? But hey, they are a nice little thing. This is an adder, uh, the only poisonous snake native to the UK, I believe. Ooh. There it is, being all looking like a big poo. Uh, penguin here, what is that? No, it's a cormorant. <laughs> I saw the outline and thought they were penguins. I was very wrong. Let's see how wrong I was. Oh no, wait, this one's all stuck together. Oh no, we're good. We're going. Yeah, that's that still looks a little bit penguiny, but not as much as I thought it would. Next up, oyster catcher and cockle on a river estuary. Ooh. Oh, that one's broke. But now we can do this and see it without the um little outline there. Gee, what a time that was. And finally porpoise seen from the cliff top but did they do it on porpoise <laughs> we're doing dad jokes it's time to move to the next thing isn't it nice little things these though a uh, nice little bit of artwork nice little bit of fun for the kids but that's enough of that because wait for it i've got something you had to send off with tokens for <laughs> hey so you collected eight tokens from the back of frosties and you could send off for one of tony's tubbers just let that uh, name sink in a bit there. Tony's Tubbers. Yeah, I know, right? So I actually had, we obviously got Frosties at the time because I had the full set of three of these and you'd needed, well, 24 bloody um, 
tokens. Well, I don't know how many tokens. Maybe you've got more than one on one box. You never know these things. But Tony's Tubbers were little, well, peg and hole games, basically, in a little plastic tub. And this one is Space Race. There's Tony in his UFO, which is clearly too small to house the rest of his body, so his severed head and arm have just been propped up inside by evil aliens. And that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. So inside that one's fallen over that's annoying they all had the same little um pieces for the games if i remember this this has sort of come away a bit the uh wood has split and separated a bit i think that's because it's got damp at some stage i would guess but there we go there's this little board and your stuff but how do you play it well Space Race, one of three Tony's Tubbers from Kellogg's Frosties. Out in space, Tony is watching the space race between blue and red spaceships. Yes, he is well known for doing that. Moving one hole at a time, you must try to reach Mars before the Martians get to Earth. You can't overtake, pass over the stars, or turn back. You must keep on going. Never give up, never surrender. The first fleet with all four ships on the other planet is the winner. 1988. My God. So yeah, it's just a simple little game. Yeah. Meh. Meh. Oh, that one's fallen over. Oh, he moved over a star. You're cheating. Oh, mom, mom, I'm telling. I imagine this is one of those games where there's probably a mathematical model that says what moves you should do so you can't be beaten or something. I don't know. Maybe you can work that out at home if uh, you've got an awful lot of time on your hands and you like such things. But there we are. That's what you could get through the post after sending off many tokens and waiting for 30 days for delivery because everything took a bloody month to come in the 80s there was none of this amazon prime you know so there we are that is some of the joys you could find in your cereal boxes in the 80s and 90s um although mostly 80s actually well, that was 1991 these were 1990 these were 1987 weren't they this was 1988 and these were 1985 it says so on the bottom ah look at that we've dated them all just like the antiques road show now let's disappoint a granny by telling her that something she's kept in her loft that her grandfather gave her years ago is worth precisely fuck all Stop, boy, boy.